This is the first video lecture for section 2.4 on rank methods. In this lecture, we'll learn about a new method called the board account. So we've already studied the plurality and Condorcet methods. And in this lecture, we're gonna learn about a new method where we assign points to the candidates based on each ballot. And the candidate with the most points at the end is going to be the winner. So points are assigned based on where they're ranked. So we assign a number based on first place, second place, third place, and so on. And so one example of how we could do this is we could say first place ballots are worth five points, second place is worth three points, third place is worth one point, and fourth place is also worth one point. So as long as we assign the points non-increasingly, so in other words, as we go down the ballot, as we go from first place to last place, these numbers can't go up. And that should hopefully make sense, right? We don't want second place to be worth more than first place. That wouldn't make any sense. But it's okay to have a tie, right? So this is not a problem. Having third place and fourth place both be worth one point is totally fine. So as long as the points don't go up as you go down the ballot, you can assign the points in any method that you want. Now you want to assign the points the same for each ballot. You don't want one person's ballot to have points assigned one way and somebody else's ballot to have points assigned another way. So the method is going to apply equally to everyone's ballots, but we can decide before the election how we want those points to work. So let's look at this as an example, right? So let's say that we have that point system that we were just talking about, and let's say that we have this voter profile, and let's try to figure out who the winner of the election is going to be. And again, remember how we read these. This means that we have eight voters who like D the best, A second best, B third best, and C last. Six voters with C best and D second, so on, three and two. So what I like to do for this kind of example is I like to make a little chart, right? Because there's gonna be a lot of numbers flying around, so I wanna make sure that I'm being organized. So for these eight voters, let's look at this first row first. Remember that our point system is that first place is worth five, second place is worth three, third place is worth one, and fourth place is also worth one. So we've got eight voters, and they like D first. And first place votes are worth five points. So that's eight ballots on which D gets five points. So the number of points that D is going to get is going to be eight times five, which works out to be 40. Now having a calculator handy is useful for this kind of thing, right? Just so that you don't have to do the arithmetic in your head. Now these ballots have A listed in second place. Second place is worth three points. So A is going to get eight times three. Eight ballots times three points per ballot. And eight times three works out to be 24. Now B is in third place. Third place is worth one point. So that's eight times one, which is eight. And then C is in last place. Fourth place is also worth one point. So that's also eight times one, which is eight. So what you're doing is you're multiplying the number of voters times the number of points that that candidate got for those kinds of ballots. So in this next row, we have six voters and they like C the best. So C is in first place for those six ballots. So C is going to get six times five, six ballots times five, vote, five points per ballot. Six times five is 30. D is in second place on these ballots. Second place is worth three. So that's six times three, which is 18. A and B are in third and fourth place. Those are both worth one. So six times one, six times one. And keep going in this manner. So three, ba three ballots with D in first place. So three times five is 15. C is in second place. Second place is worth three points. So that's three times three, which is nine. A and B are in third and fourth place again. So three times one, three times one. Again, you're multiplying the number of ballots times the number of points that a candidate gets for having that ranking on that ballot. Two points, two ballots here with A in first place. First place is worth five, so A is going to get two times five, which is 10. B is in second place. A and B are finally getting some love here. So B is gonna get three points for each of those ballots. So that's two times three, number of ballots times the number of points for those ballots. D and C are in third and fourth place in this case. So that's two times one and two times one. All right, now that we figured out how many points all these candidates have gotten from their ballots, now what we're gonna do is add up all those points. So we're gonna take 24 plus six plus three plus 10. That works out to be 43. Again, having a calculator handy is a good thing. Add up all these points for B, eight plus six plus three plus six. That's gonna be 23. And then we've got 
8 plus 30 plus 9 plus 2, that's going to be 49. And then finally, D is going to get 40 plus 18 plus 15 plus 2, that's going to be 75. And then we look at all these numbers and we see, oh, 75, that's the highest total, so D is the winner. So D wins because D had more points than anyone else. So rank methods are pretty common. So you you see this kind of thing in sports. So a lot of times when there's votes for uh, ranking teams in the NCAA or choosing the MVP for Major League Baseball, Heisman Trophy, a lot of times they use rank methods to figure out the winner there. Uh, education use these, uses these things to elect student representatives sometimes. So some examples are University of Michigan and UCLA. And then there's also historical examples. So a form of this rank voting that we're talking about was used by the Roman Senate beginning around the year 105. So there's a special kind of rank method when we pick the points in a very specific way. So this is called the board account. When we have three candidates, the scoring is 2-1-0. Now, what do I mean by that? So this means that first place votes are worth two points, second place votes are worth one point, and third place votes are worth zero points. And four candidates, it goes 3-2-1-0. Five candidates goes 4-3-2-1-0. So hopefully you're seeing the pattern there. So the number of points goes down by one every time, and the last place is always worth zero. Another way to think about how board account is working is that what we're doing is we're giving points to a candidate based on how many candidates they beat, how many candidates they are ranked higher than. So for example, if you had an election with seven candidates, A through G, and we had, let's just say that we had this voter preference. So E is in last place. Last place is always worth zero. So E would get zero points for that vote. But B, well, they didn't, they're, they're ranked pretty low, but they at least beat E. So because they beat one candidate, they get one point. F is ranked higher than B and E. So F beat two candidates, so F would get two points and so on. And so thinking, going from the bottom, going up to the top, we would see that D would get six points for this ballot because D beat six candidates. So let's do another example. So let's say that we have a voter profile here to decide which team's baseball game to attend. We've got some Philly fans, we've got some Orioles fans, we've got some Pirates fans, and we're going to have an election to figure out which of these stadiums we want to go to. And we're going to use board account to figure this out. So how do the board account points work when we have three candidates? So with three candidates, first place is going to be worth two, second place is going to be worth one, and third place is going to be worth zero. So the arithmetic is going to be a little bit easier this time, but again, grab a calculator if that's helpful for you. So we've got 13 voters in this first row of my profile. They like the Phillies the best, so that's the first place candidate there. So there's going to be 13 ballots times two points each is going to give me 26. Orioles are ranked second. Second place is worth one point, so that's 13 times one is going to be 13. And then the Pirates are ranked last on these ballots, so that's going to be zero points for the Pirates. 13 times zero is just going to be zero. Then I've got 10, can, uh, 10 voters here who like the Orioles the best. First place votes in this system are worth two points, so 10 times two, that's going to be 20 points for the Orioles. Pirates are second, so that's going to be 10 times one. Pirates get on the board here. And then finally, Phillies are last. Last place in this system are worth zero, so 10 times zero is zero. Then I've got eight voters. They like the Pirates the best. First place votes are worth two. So that's eight ballots times two points per ballot. Eight times two is 16. Orioles are ranked second. Eight times one is eight. And then Phillies are ranked last. Last place is worth zero. So poor Phillies, eight times zero is zero. Finally, I've got five voters who like the Pirates the best. So that's five times two, which is 10. And then Phillies are second, that's worth one point each, so five times one is five. And then finally, Orioles last place, sadly, so five times zero is going to be zero. All right, so we've done all our calculations, that's how many points that each of these candidates are gonna get, and now we're gonna do the arithmetic. So we're gonna add up these totals to find out the total number of points that each candidate received. So Phillies get 26 plus zero plus zero plus five, that works out to be 31. The Orioles get 13 plus 20 plus 8 plus 0. That's going to be 41. And then finally, the Pirates get 0 plus 10 plus 16 plus 10. That's 36. 
And so the Orioles are the winner here with 41 points. So if you're a baseball fan and they're not your favorite team, I apologize. Okay, so next time what we're going to talk about is are these rank methods fair, right? This is always the question that we ask. Once we learn how to use a new method, we ask the question of whether or not it's a fair method. So do these methods, for example, satisfy the Condorcet winner criterion, which we talked about in the previous section? And are there other fairness criteria that we want to use to analyze these rank methods to see if they have this fairness?